Next up in the shop renovation series was wrapping up the porch project on the front of the shop. And in case you missed it, I covered pouring the concrete footings and framing the porch in previous videos. And in this week's video, I'm gonna get the metal roofing installed. I got my metal roofing from my local Best Buy Metals, and they were awesome enough to provide the materials I needed for this project, so big thanks to them. And this was my first time doing a metal roofing project, and they helped me figure out exactly what I needed. And all in all, I needed 19 of their PBR metal roofing panels, two pieces of outside corner trim, and six pieces of eave trim, plus screws, butyl tape, and foam closure strips. Before getting started installing the roofing panels, I needed to add the eave drip edge, which helps to protect the fascia from water. The first piece of drip edge needed a few cuts made before installing, so the material would wrap around the corner of the fascia. I marked a line an inch in from the end of the trim and then made my cuts, first removing the hem from the bottom edge and then removing a section of the top of the trim. Finally, I folded over the flap left after cutting and this is where the trim will wrap around the corner of the fascia. I also finally picked up some hand seamers for this job and they made making these folds so much easier. At the other end of this first piece, I needed to cut away a section of the hem so I could tuck this end into the next piece of drip edge. And these trim pieces come in 10 foot lengths and my porch is 56 feet long, so I'd obviously need multiple pieces to cover the entire fascia. Once that was done, I could finally get the first piece installed, which was simple enough with my roofing nailer. And I added nails roughly every foot. And you could definitely hand drive roofing nails here, but it'd be a little tricky, especially if you're working by yourself. Also, I'm not exactly sure if I oriented these trim pieces correctly here, and I actually think the wider section might have been meant for the top base of the roof, but since all of my framing material is pressure treated, I'm not really worried about it. With the first piece installed, I could just repeat the process down the rest of the roof, and the next pieces in line only needed this section of hem removed at one end. I did also spread the hem a little bit at the other end, where it would lap onto the previous piece of drip edge, and this just made things easier. I could get the second piece installed once that was done, and I added a bead of silicone where the two pieces lapped to help seal out water. After adding the caulk, I slid the notch section of the first piece of trim into the hem on the second piece, locking the two pieces together, and this not only looks good, but keeps the pieces from flapping around in the wind. Finally, I could nail off the piece of trim and then move on to the next piece. And as you can see, tucking the previous piece into the next piece gives the drip edge a super clean look, and I wish I would have known about this trick when I did the roof on the not-so-tiny house. I repeated the same process for the rest of the drip edge, making the same bend on the right end of the last piece so it wrapped around that corner, and I could call the drip edge done. Next, we could work on getting the metal roofing panels installed, and I started the process by setting up a string line. And this string line will give me a reference when aligning the ends of the panels so there would be an even overhang along the entire roof. To add the string line, I first screwed on a scrap block at one end of the roof and then marked a line on the block two inches from the fascia, which represented my overhang. Next, I added a screw to the top of the scrap block on my line and then tied off my string line around the screw. I repeated the process of adding a scrap block at the other end of the roof, and then pulled the string line between the two screws, making sure it was nice and tight so it didn't sag across the long 56 foot distance. Once the string line was in place, I could finally get the first roofing panel installed. And we lifted the panel up onto the roof, trying not to scratch the drip edge in the process, and then aligned the panel with the left edge of the roof and the string line. And there'll be gable trim to cover the gable edges of the roof, so it didn't really matter if the panel was slightly off there, as long as it was aligned with the string line. Next, I could add a few screws to tack the panel in place, and I measured up three and three quarters of an inch from the end of the panel, so my screw would be centered on the purlin below. And Best Buy Metals includes documentation on their recommended screw spacing, and I just followed that here, adding a screw on each side of the ribs at the bottom and top edges of the panels. I also did my best not to overdrive the screws, which would deform the panels, or underdrive them, which would lead to leaks. With that, the first panel was in place, and before installing the second panel, I needed to add a strip of butyl tape on the underside of the rib, which would overlap the first panel. And this is a requirement on lower roof pitches, anything less than a 312 pitch in this case, and this just helps avoid leaks since the water will shed a little more slowly. Once the butyl tape was on, we could install the second panel, overlapping the ribs with the first panel and screwing it to the purlins with the same screw pattern. I did also add a lap screw where the two panels overlapped, which again helps prevent leaks on lower pitched roofs. 
From there, we repeated the process for another two panels, bringing the total to four panels installed, and then I hopped up on the roof to add the rest of the screws. I needed to add a row of screws every two feet on center where the panels met up with the purlins below, and I snapped a chalk line to help keep everything aligned, and this was a pretty simple, if not tedious, process. And once again, Best Buy Metals has the screw pattern for the center of these panels detailed in their instructions, and I just followed those as closely as possible. From there, we repeated the process for another five panels, with my drone almost creeping into a tree branch while we worked. Before moving on, I decided to go ahead and pre-drill the holes in the rest of the panels, which I hoped would save me a lot of measuring work up on the roof. I started by getting the panels lined up and then carefully marked out my hole locations, obviously wanting to avoid any errant holes in my roof. Once everything was marked out, I drilled the first hole and then tacked the panels to the piece of plywood below to keep them from shifting around while I drilled the rest of my holes. And overall, this went super quick and I definitely think it saved me some time installing the rest of the panels. While we work on installing the panels, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands right to your door each month. Each box of awesome has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of that price. Also, 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Best of all, you only pay for what you want. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you each month, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. After filling out the Bespoke Post questionnaire, surprise, surprise, since I'm a huge cocktail nerd, I was matched with a few cocktail-related boxes. The Dram box included these awesome whiskey glasses, jumbo ice ball molds, old-fashioned mixer, and this field guide to whiskey book. The smoked box included this super cool cocktail smoking and infusion kit, plus some hickory wood smoking chips. And finally, the julep box included, you guessed it, a set of silver-plated julep cups and straws, a crushed ice tray, cocktail muddler, and simple syrup. And these three boxes are going to seriously up my cocktail game, and I've even been toying with the idea of starting a cocktail-related YouTube channel. Crafted cocktails, anyone? A Bespoke Post subscription is the perfect gift for your favorite friend or family member, and it's the gift that keeps on giving, literally. So to get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter Crafted20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash crafted20. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this week's video, and let's get back to work. Before we knew it, we were to the last panel. So this panel needed to be cut to width, and I figured setting it in place and marking it would be the easiest way to get an accurate cut. I made a mark at both ends and then connected the marks with a level, and then pulled out my weapon of choice for this job. And I used this special impact driver attachment to make this cut, and overall it worked pretty well. It definitely cut fast, but I'm not sure if I was using it correctly since it left me with a super wavy cut. Thankfully, this cut edge will be covered by the gable trim, but if you have any tips on setting these things up properly, let me know in the comments. After cutting the piece to width, all that was left to do was install it, and with that, we could call the metal roofing panels installed, or at least tacked in place. Unfortunately, we had a ton of rain here in Asheville over the following week or so, and this kind of metal roof gets extremely slick when it's wet, so I had to wait a bit to get it finished up. I also noticed that there was a ton of water being dumped from the roof right onto the porch footings, so I'm probably gonna have to add some gutters to this roof at some point soon. Once things dried out enough, I went ahead and got the rest of the screws added to fasten the metal panels, and it's kind of insane how many of these screws go into a roof like this. And pre-drilling the holes definitely helped to speed things up here. With all the screws added to the roof panels, I could get the rest of the trim installed, starting with the gable trim. I first cut the roof pitch angle, roughly 7 degrees in my case, on the side of the end of the trim closest to the building, and then I could bring the trim piece outside and set it in place on the roof. I marked out where the trim intersected the metal siding, which would need to be cut away to allow the gable trim to tuck up under the siding. After marking where I needed to cut, I got the section cut away using a small angle grinder, and this was pretty tricky since it was so tight to the roof. I got it cut and the trim fit well, plus there was room for the in-wall trim to tuck in above the gable trim. I used a level to get the gable trim aligned with the roof panels and then tacked it in place with one screw at the back and front of the trim so I could mark out where I needed to cut the other end. I marked a line flush with the roof panel on the top of the trim and then marked a plumb line on the side of the trim, also even with the roof panel. 
and I started to try to cut this piece to length with it attached to the roof, but quickly realized that was not going to work, so I removed it and set the piece on sawhorses to finish making the cut. When I cut the trim to length, I left a 1 inch wide flap on the top front edge of the trim and then used my hand seamers to fold this flap down. And This flap will give the front end of the gable trim a nice finished look, which you'll see in a minute. I also cleaned up my cuts a bit and used a black marker to touch up any scratches while I was at it. Before installing the trim, I also needed to add a strip of butyl tape where the top edge of the trim meets the roof panels and this will keep water from working its way under the trim. Once that was done, I could get the gable trim installed, reattaching it in the same two screw locations as before, and then adding the rest of the screws. And this included screws through the top of the trim in line with the roof panel screws, as well as screws through the sides of the trim attaching it to the fascia. And I went with a 12 inch screw spacing on the sides, although I think that might've been a little overkill. And now that the trim is installed, you can see how the finished end looks after installation. And there are a lot of ways to finish the end of this kind of gable trim, but I think this looks nice and was pretty simple to cut and fold. Next, I repeated the whole process on the other end of the roof to wrap up the gable trim installation. The last metal bits to add to the roof were the end wall flashing pieces, and these tuck up under the metal siding and help to move the water from the siding to the roof. As you can see, these flashing pieces were absolutely massive, which made working with them pretty tricky as you'll see. On this first piece, I wanted to add a one inch wide bent flap so the flashing would wrap over the edge of the gable trim, and this was definitely easier said than done. Even with my hand seamers, I didn't end up with the cleanest bend here, but I came up with another method which I'll show when I get to the other end of the roof. On the other end of this flashing, I cut away about 6 inches of the hem so I can tuck this piece into the next piece in line, similar to how I did with the eave drip edge. With that done, I could get up on the roof and get the flashing installed, and of course my GoPro decided to die right then so I don't have footage of this first piece going in. The basic process was to add a strip of butyl tape and these foam closures an inch back from the edge of the end wall trim, and then tuck the trim up under the siding panels, which was a complete pain as you'll see. After getting the first piece installed, I added the rest of the butyl tape and foam closures before moving on. To keep all of this aligned, I snapped a chalk line, but I had to dry off the roof first so I didn't gum up my chalk. And after snapping a chalk line, I added the butyl tape and then the foam closures. And these foam closure strips lock together with this dovetail slot, and they're designed to perfectly match the profile of the roofing panels. They help to seal the gap between the in-wall trim and the roofing panels and keep out bugs and water, which is obviously pretty important. From there, I just kept installing butyl tape and closure strips until I got to the other end of the roof. And the foam closures needed to be trimmed where they met up with the gable trim here, and I just cut them to be even with the top edge of the gable trim. With that done, I could finally get to installing the in-wall trim, and I first loosened the screws in the section where I'd be adding it. And the older screws in this upper row had seen better days, and most of them were already loose, so I'll be replacing them after installing the trim. I prepped the second piece of trim, cutting off the hem at one end, and I also tried bending the upper section to get it to tuck up under the siding more easily, which as it turns out was a total waste of time. I also opened up the hem where this piece would lap onto the previous piece, and this was extremely helpful in getting the pieces to seat properly. With that, I could bring the piece up onto the roof, and the struggle fest could commence. So as you can see, doing this by myself was next to impossible, and if I managed to get one end of the trim tucked up under the siding, the other end would just pop out. And I struggled with this for way too long, cursing up a storm, and finally stopped so I could regroup and think of another solution. Thankfully, as it turned out, the solution was pretty simple. I realized I could just go up into the attic and jam a few scraps in between the framing and the siding to give me more room to tuck the trim under the siding. And I was actually able to pull this piece up behind the siding from inside the attic. With that finally done, I could get the trim lapped over the previous piece, adding a few beads of caulk to seal the overlap. Once that was done, I could get the trim set in place and reattach the screws I had added when I cut the siding during the framing phase of the porch project. I didn't add the screws to fasten the trim to the roof or the caulk on the top face of the foam closures at this point as I wanted to get this trim installed as quickly as possible since there was a lot more rain on the radar. From there I continued installing more in-wall trim and thankfully I didn't have too much of a struggle getting the rest of the pieces added with my new attic scrap wood wedge method. Eventually I got to the last piece of trim which needed to be cut to length and I made sure to account for the overlap with the previous piece and the one inch bend at the end. 
So as I mentioned, I came up with a better way to make this bend, and here's what I landed on. I clamped two straight pieces of plywood on each side of the trim where I wanted to make the bend, sandwiching the metal between the plywood. I could then start the bend by hand, which was a little tricky, but doable. And then I got the bend nice and tight with a dead blow mallet. And as you can hopefully see, this resulted in a much cleaner bend, which was a big relief since this is the more visible side of the roof from the street. With that, the trim piece was ready so I could get it tucked up under the siding, which thankfully wasn't too difficult after loosening a few more screws. Once that was done, I could finally call the end wall trim installed, or at least set in place, and I called it a day since the rain was really starting to come down. The next day, I could get the rest of the screws added to permanently attach the trim, as well as reinforce the siding, and there were a few hundred screws to attach at this point. Since I wanted to minimize trips up and down the ladder to swap my camera and tool batteries, I pulled out my 70MI Power Station Terra 1000, which was the perfect way to keep all of my devices charged while working up on the roof. And if the sun was actually out, I could have also pulled out my 70MI solar panels, but it was just way too cloudy and rainy for those. And in case you're interested in picking up a Terra 1000 for yourself, I'll include a link and a code to get 50 bucks off in the video description below. I started by adding the screws to the siding, adding new screws in the area where I had removed those screws previously. I also added a bunch more screws at the bottom of the siding panels through the in-wall trim, and I was able to add these since we added all of that blocking behind this area earlier in the series. Next, I could get the in-wall trim screwed to the roofing panels, but first I needed to clean up the mess from the caulk I had used where the trim pieces lapped. And this was supposed to dry clear, but instead was dripping white coloring all over this new black roof. So I wiped off the area and switched over to Lexel. And Lexel can be applied to wet surfaces, so it was really ideal here, and it's clear so it wouldn't make the same mess. I applied it to the lapped area as well as between the foam closure strips and the trim, and then I could add screws at each ridge to attach the trim. I also added a few screws where the trim pieces lapped to help seal the connection between the two pieces. From there, I could repeat the process down the rest of the roof, and let me tell you, I was completely worn out by the time this was all done. That was a ton of screws. Thankfully, the trim was looking really good, and most importantly, the roof should be totally watertight now. The last thing I wanted to add to wrap up the porch were a few solar lights on the front of the posts. And these have motion sensors built in, and my hope is these will help people see the posts more easily if they're pulling in at night so they don't run into them with their car. The last thing I need to deal with to wrap up the porch is to add some kind of trim to cover up the rim joist and also caulk around that edge of the gable trim and this trim piece. And I'm going to be adding a pressure treated 2x12 for the trim here, which should match the rest of the porch framing nicely. That said, I want to wait until my new garage doors are installed here in the next couple of weeks before adding this trim as the 2x12 might be in the way otherwise. So with that, I could officially call the porch project a wrap. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this whole porch project series. I am really proud of the way it all came together. It was definitely a massive amount of work, but I think the front of the shop looks a hundred times better. So from here, I'll be moving back inside of the shop, which is perfect timing because it's getting pretty cold here in Asheville. We'll be working on all of the shop electrical, which is a pretty huge project. And then once that's done, I'm going to be getting the drop ceiling installed. So if you guys don't want to miss the rest of the videos in this series, go ahead and get subscribed and ring the notification bell. Also, as always, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I use down in the video description below. And last, if you want to support me, I sell merch. I have plans available for a lot of my woodworking projects, and I have both Patreon and YouTube members set up. All right, thanks for watching, y'all, and until next week, happy building.